Welcome back, Maurice Wilkie for Cambridge Community Television as well as Neighbor Media. And I have the pleasure of having on the phone right now Brian Kaur. He is the Executive Director of the Peace Commission for Cambridge. And he's here to talk to us today about the annual Martin Luther King Jr. Day Commemoration and Remembrance, which is happening Monday the 21st. So welcome to CCTV's Airwaves, Brian Kaur. Well, thank you so much, Maurice. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be here on your show, and I, I will say I'm a big, big fan of CCTV and um, your show as well. Uh, I have the privilege of being an honorary board member, so I'm I'm always glad to do something directly with CCTV. Always yeah. good to yeah, always good to hear that. I love that. Love the civic engagement, and uh, you'd probably be the best person to talk to about civic <laughs> engagement. So there's an event coming up. Uh, it's actually next Monday. The uh, annual MLK Day Commemoration and Remembrance, and that's happening at uh, St. Peter's Episcopal Church. That's right, right there in Central Square, so it's uh, almost directly across from Cambridge City Hall, and Mm -hmm. this is something that I have to say, it's really one of my favorite things that I get to do in my work for the City of Cambridge. Uh, We come together every year on Martin Luther King Day, and we have a program that works to help us really remember the life and legacy of Dr. King. Um, He is often invoked, as you know, around unity, around service, and those are important things and things that he talked about. But we really focus on the message that he delivered repeatedly as he um, came to the end of his life. And it's really a message of how we have to look at the struggles and challenges in our society historically, and based on understanding and recognizing those, move to have some radical transformation. Uh, It's important to help people in the here and now, but it's also vitally important to change the conditions that lead to people needing help, that lead to inequality, that lead to violence. So that's that's really what we come together to remember every year. And we'll be doing that on Monday. Very nice. I mean, I love the way you put that. Uh, Dr. King had some interactions with the Boston area. He went to Boston University. And he also had some, uh, you know, interaction with Harvard and Cambridge Region Latin. Um, not sure if you're familiar with that. I mean, I do know that he spoke in Cambridge, right in Central Square, but I did not know that he had a connection to Cambridge Ridge and Latin School. I believe he visited or was very close. To, I know he definitely went to uh, Harvard to visit. Um, mm-hmm. Does t- Dr. King's legacy have any importance to you or significance to you? Well, he it really does. He spoke again, toward the end of his life, very specifically of these giant triplets, as he called them, these giant triplets of racism, extreme materialism, and militarism. Mm. And when I look at the work I've done over the years as a community activist, a peace activist, as someone working on um, police accountability, all of those issues come to play. We think about the legacy and history of our country, and even though he's been gone for over 50 years, the, the work he did on thinking about the intersection between those issues, the history of our country, really informs the work I do. Uh, Here at the Peace Commission, our official name is the Cambridge Commission on Nuclear Disarmament and Peace Education. Oh, wow. It goes back to the 80s. When I started this job 10, 11 years ago, people said, nuclear disarmament. Exactly. I'm like, okay, (laughs) right. Although I I will say in the last few years, people have started to get worried about nuclear weapons again. But when when you think about that, really at the core of that is we have a society that's so focused on developing technology and systems and making money and protecting what we've got in our property in a sort of negative sense and almost a nihilistic sense sometimes that this idea of nuclear war and the the opposite of it, educating people about peace, looking at the seeds of conflict. I mean, that was really what Dr. King talked about. And as much as he's thought of as a civil rights leader, Mm -hmm. that that work on civil rights was really the the introduction into much deeper work around the inequity that exists in our society and the excesses of wealth and power and the impoverishment that comes from that. Um, The speech that we build this program around Mm -hmm. is from 1967. And... Mm -hmm. Amazingly enough, it was a year to the day before he was shot in Memphis. So he gave the speech on April 4th, 1967. Mm-hmm. And in it, he really talked about these issues. He also, uh, within a lot of circles, it, it's known as when he came out against the Vietnam War. Yes, yes. But what's significant to me is that it wasn't just. And as a civil rights leader, 
you should oppose this war. It was that the war in Vietnam, the poverty in our cities, the discrimination we see, the violence that takes place, these are all connected. And that we cannot stand against one of those injustices without standing against all of them. And, and I think that speaks to everyone, right? Because it's not just, oh, this is my issue. I have to get you to work on it. It's, we have to really recognize that they all work in combination. With each and other, yes. Exactly. So we all have to work in combination with each other to, to build a society that um, looks toward hope and abundance as opposed to fear and scarcity. Wow. And so that is what I get to do, as I say, in my, my job here in the city of Cambridge. I'm very lucky. And, uh, and how, have hopefully things, how have things been for this? I know it's a... Sorry to interrupt you. No, uh, not at all. I, I, we're very, very fresh and new into our our new year of 2019. How have uh, things been for the city of Cambridge in 2019 in terms of those uh, you know, objectives? Well, yeah, it's always challenging because we live in this United States of America. Mm. And Cambridge overall is a very progressive place. Yes. We have wonderful programs. We've got great, amazing people. We have a lot of diversity. Of course, we have the same challenges people have throughout the country. And as we have been in this year where we're living through a federal administration and federal government that has whatever your politics are, some serious challenges and yes. there's some serious disagreements. We have a federal government that's been shut down. I think right here in Cambridge, what we've been focused on in terms of city staff and elected leadership is what do we need to do to make sure that the people that we serve, the people who live in Cambridge, who work in Cambridge, who play or worship in Cambridge, are treated fairly with equity, are given the resources they need, are taken care of, have the opportunities that they need, whatever's happening in Washington, D.C. Um, you know, I think we really saw this with the beginning of the talk about um, our current president clamping down on sanctuary cities, and Cambridge is a sanctuary city. Yes. And one of the first things that we all did together, again, um, city staff and elected leadership was to pledge that we will support those in our community. We will remain a sanctuary city. We will not be bullied. We will not let those who are part of our community be, be bullied, and we shall continue to take care of them. And so as we come into 2019, I really feel like that's the spirit that we all have, that we, we know these are tough times, and even for those of us who are doing pretty well ourselves, we're part of a community where many people are not doing as well. Mm. And there's this almost existential threat that floats over them from the national environment. So we know that right here in Cambridge, we have to do what we can to, as I say, take care of people and also make sure that we're challenging ourselves to, mm. to be aware of our biases, to be aware of how as much we, as we might be trying to do the right thing, we may fall short. And that's also one of the things that I'm very proud of about our city. We never sit back and say, oh, well, we're Cambridge, we're cool, we're good. <laughs> we're always questioning and challenging ourselves. And it's not always comfortable or easy, but, but it's very important because otherwise you slowly get pulled back into the, the mainstream problems that we see in our society. So it's, I, um, it's, it's good to be here. I love the ideals, and they, they definitely you know expose some of the thoughts and feelings that I believe a Dr. King would definitely be proud proud of uh to 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 transition to uh the event that has mm -hmm. his name on it um what can you know I, will this particular upcoming commemoration and remembrance differ from past performances can you describe what people can expect at this event sure absolutely so i would say um yes and no it will be different and the same in good ways as i mentioned we structure it almost like a memorial service hmm. so it's I wouldn't say somber. I mean, it's very serious, mm -hmm. and there are moments that are very poignant, but it's also something where we want people to celebrate and to come away celebrating the life and work of Dr. King. So we begin, I mean, I will say threaded throughout this, it's a combination of readings, speaking, and music. Uh, mm. So we, we start with music, we have some remarks welcoming people into the space, we will have our mayor, Mark McGovern, mm. speak, as well as the rector from the church welcome us. And then, um, again, we have more music, we do readings, most of which are from that speech I mentioned, the, which is also called the Beyond Vietnam speech from Riverside Church. Yes. And they're in those three triplets, right? The, the, uh, the readings on militarism, readings on materialism, and readings on racism. We have a, a range of people from the community, over a dozen, 
uh, representing different ages, backgrounds, beliefs, and um, who participate in the program through reading. And then the, the centerpiece, which is different every year, is a speaker. Uh, and this year, our speaker is Ellen Semenoff. Uh, she is actually working, she's an assistant city manager for human service programs for the city of Cambridge. Mm. And she's going to tell a bit of her own story, which includes uh, quirking for Supreme Court Chief, or Supreme Court Justice, only Chief Justice in my dreams, Supreme Court <laughs> Justice Thurgood Marshall. Wow. And little known fact that um, our own Ellen Semenoff quirked for Thurgood Marshall. And, uh, but she also quirked for other amazing judges who really were leaders in creating um, modern-day civil rights in the society. So she can talk about that, but also for many, many years she's worked for the city and has helped lead efforts, again, to take care of people through human service programs, whether that's youth centers or after-school programs or workforce development and job training, but also um, helping collaboratively to lead work on addressing issues of racism and, and um, inequality within city government, within program provision. So she's a really inspirational person, and um, so she'll be speaking. And I, it's it's one of those things that's a real pleasure to have someone who's really a colleague who can speak so beautifully about um, her life, but also the work that she has done with all of us here in the city. That is amazing! So, um, wow. Yeah, it it'll be great. And um, so yeah, music, readings, wonderful remarks, and then at uh, about twelve forty, we'll end. There's an opportunity to come down and have lunch. And then the other thing that's going on in Cambridge, which the Peace Commission is not, we're sort of a co-sponsor, but we don't organize it, is the Many Helping Hands Day of Service. Yes. So this has been organized by uh, volunteers from the community. Lori Lander from um, West Cambridge is really the, the person who's the engine behind this. But uh, they bring together hundreds of people um, to volunteer and uh, do different things in, in kind of the idea of service. Uh, this was a movement that started nationally of making Martin Luther King Day a day on as opposed to a day off. A national and it's been day done of service, in, yeah. Exactly. So because it's a little cold here. <laughs> a <laughs> little. Know, it's supposed to be very cold on Monday, but that should deter no one, especially from the church, because it will be warm. But um, it, it will be pretty cold. So instead of what happens in, say, warmer places where people may go out into the community into different places and clean up lots or paint things and that sort of thing, people actually come together in various buildings in Central Square and do different projects, um, things for people who are experiencing homelessness, yes. uh, things for young people, uh, shut-ins, as it were, that's the old term I grew yeah, up with. No, that's true. Um, and so there, there are just a lot of different things that people can do. So I would say my, my ideal for someone is get there at 11, come to St. Peter's right there in the square, get inspired, get challenged think about what we can do differently, and then have lunch with us, meet a whole bunch of different people, and then carry that spirit into volunteering. At, um, there'll be people at the church we're in, there'll be people at City Hall, at the YWCA, yes. at the Senior Center. So there's all these different sites right there in Central Square. So even though it'll be a little bit cold, you don't have to go more than 100 feet between buildings to get somewhere. So, uh, And then you can really, you, you'll be done by, you know, mid-afternoon, and you can take the rest of the day off and relax or do whatever it is you want to do, having been inspired, having connected with people, and having done a bit of good in the world. Yes. Wow. That sounds like an amazing day. So once again, the day we uh, we sem- celebrate his uh, holiday, which will be the following Monday after his birthday, it was just January 15th, but uh, the Cambridge Annual MLK Day Commemoration and Remembrance event, Monday, January 21st, that's a 11 a.m. over at St. Peter's Episcopal Church, 838 Massachusetts Avenue in Cambridge. That's right. That's right. And if people need any more information, um, you can always go to the city website, find the Peace Commission website and or web page in there, and there's some links, but it's just cambridgema.gov slash peace. I love that. Brian, thank you so much for the time that you've shared with us this afternoon. And uh, we look forward to finding out more events uh, throughout the year, if there are additional ones. And uh, please stay in touch with us. Absolutely. I absolutely will. And thank you again for your work and your show. Um, CCTV is such a gem, and I'm really glad to be able to spend a little bit of my time informing uh, your viewers and the community about what's going on right here in Cambridge. Very good. Brian Corr, everybody, Executive Director of Cambridge's Peace Commission.